Hey there, breathing humans, Trace here, and I've been thinking about the Amazon, and I'm sure you have too, because the Amazon is on fire. But before you tune out because of the media oversaturation, stick around, because I'm here to tell you people are getting things wrong. I wanna talk about oxygen, where it comes from, and to explore the myth that 20% of the world's oxygen comes from the Amazon rainforest, because that's not really how it works. Let's kick into it. Welcome, welcome, and thank you so much for choosing to watch Uno Dose of Trace. The Amazon is on fire. Hank Green just did an incredible video for Vlogbrothers about why the Amazon is in flames. As he stated very clearly, it is not the Amazon is burning, it's being burned. He's right. This is something that we, the humans, are doing. The reason behind it is, I mean, it's fraught. But rather than going into it here, just watch Hank Green's piece or read any of the hundreds of news articles about it. The thing that really bugs me is I keep seeing this mystical 20% of Earth's oxygen comes from the whatever. I mean, it's on every news site. I hear a bunch of tweets and videos that mention it, and that's just not quite right. I get why they're saying it, because they want you to care about this problem. But you can care about it without thinking that the Amazon are the lungs of the Earth, because that's not really true. This mystical 20% number probably comes from a misunderstanding of how oxygen works on our planet. And this is a tragedy, but let's make sure that we know why. And it's not because we're running out of oxygen. Oxygen is the third most abundant element in the universe. You and I could not exist without the magic of oxygen. And I know you science nerds hate it when science people use magic words, but it's pretty great that there is enough oxygen for everyone and everything that needs it on land today. Do you know how many things breathe oxygen? Like more than 10, maybe even more than like 50 things. It's a lot. Today, Earth's atmosphere is 21% pure homegrown oxygen. But 2.4 billion years ago, we had almost none. In the interim, oxygen was converted from CO2 by cyanobacteria and phytoplankton that would suck in the poisonous carbon dioxide that dominated our atmosphere and exhale the equally poisonous oxygen, poisonous to the organisms that lived at the time. Many mass extinctions later, we have an oxygen environment and it's great, right? Super fun, love it, here we are. Now we've got plants, bacteria, phytoplankton, and they all contributed to the oxygenation of the planet, and now they maintain it. And that's really important because essentially, we on Earth live in a closed system. We can't go get new oxygen from somewhere else in the universe, and we can't take the CO2 we have, bottle it up, and shoot it into space. Pretty much everything we do is trapped here on our planet. We're like a snow globe, or a terrarium, or like a, a spaceship, uh, we're like spaceship Earth. First time anyone's ever said that, I bet. Spaceship Anyway, all the stuff that we have on the planet is here, it's been here, and it's not going anywhere else. That means the exhaled carbon dioxide of all the living things on this planet has to be counterbalanced with another living thing that breathes CO2 and exhales oxygen. It's like we have an oxygen budget. All the life on this planet is adding more and more CO2 with every breath in, and every new baby, new bacteria, new plants and animals, all sorts of things are breathing. And and they're just constantly adding CO2 and breathing in oxygen. And I'm just getting really worked up here. Let me just. This is really, oh my God. There's too many things. There's too many. While I collect myself, I know 60% of you are not subscribed to the channel. So please take a second, click subscribe. I promise you won't regret it. <gasps> Okay, I'm kind of lightheaded. Common knowledge here is that most of this counterbalancing happens in just a few places on Earth. But the myth is that we in the US are getting oxygen from places like the Amazon. Depending on what stats you read, the Amazon might produce between nine and 20% of Earth's oxygen. But, and this is a big but, it mostly stays within the Amazon, yeah. The trees in the Amazon produce lots of oxygen, and then most of it is used by the plants and animals in the Amazon. Now, if a bunch of trees died because they were, say, covered over by volcanic lava after making a bunch of oxygen, that would be a net oxygen gain because their carbon would be sequestered, trapped from re-entering the atmosphere. This could happen by falling into the sea or any number of ways, but neither of these really apply to what's going on in the Amazon today. In the US, we are breathing oxygen mainly from the good old US of A. A study of trees in urban and environments in New York City, Minneapolis, Atlanta, Calgary, Baltimore, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., and a bunch of other places around the U.S. and Canada found that the trees here in the U.S. produce more than enough for two out of every three people in the country. The rest we import not from the Amazon, but mainly from the ocean. 
50 to 80% of Earth's oxygen is thanks to phytoplankton and other seaweed and algae in the world's oceans. Just like over the last two and a half billion years, things have not changed. One drop of water contains thousands of phytoplankton and they spend all day out there soaking up the sun like a Sheryl Crow mediocre pop song. And from that, they make oxygen. They drive the carbon cycle. The rainforests are about 7% of our land area, but the oceans are 70% of the whole planet. It makes a lot of sense that seaweeds and underwater plants would produce a huge amount of our oxygen. But phytoplankton and other algaes and seaweeds feed marine animals too. So let's stop talking about the Amazon as 20% of all of our oxygen. The Amazon is not the lungs of the planet because that's not how the planet works. We're not really breathing thanks to the Amazon. We're breathing thanks to plants in the ocean. Think of all the oxygen on our spaceship Earth as a giant tank of O2. We're breathing it, and so are all the animals and organisms that travel here with us. The atmosphere is 21% oxygen, so our oxygen tank is pretty huge, and we don't make dents in that. We breathe in very small amounts of that 21%, and photosynthesizing plants are filling that tank up with more oxygen to replace what we've burned when we run races or watch Netflix or sleep. The problem is we're destroying the ecosystem, we're replacing less of the oxygen in the tank, and we are not even close to running out, but it is a noticeable change. Since 1990, we've breathed 0.005% more oxygen out of the tank without replacing it. That's not much, but that's only since 1990. While we were out there watching DuckTales the movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp, or Rescuers Down Under, there was more oxygen in our atmosphere relative to today. 0.005 isn't much, it's barely any at all in the spaceship Earth's tank, but it's something. However, since 1990, carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere have risen 10%. 10. And that is worrying, because it's not the lack of oxygen that's gonna hurt you, it's the carbon dioxide. This whole issue has less to do with the size of the Amazon and more to do with the burning of fossil fuels and the release of sequestered carbon into the atmosphere. Remember the trees that were buried by lava that I did in that hypothetical situation? Right, we're digging them up and we're burning them as oil. That carbon was trapped and now it's in the air. Basic outdoor science. This is the fire triangle. To make fire, you need fuel, oxygen, and heat. Fire breathes oxygen. When you burn fuel in your car, you're sucking up oxygen. When you're burning coal or natural gas at a power plant, you're sucking up oxygen. Fires breathe, just like you and me, but with a lot of other polluting side effects. Overall, we need more things that soak up CO2 and sequester it than we do things that make O2. And we need to stop tossing this trapped carbon dioxide up into the air. Which brings us to a better discussion and argument against the human burning of the Amazon and other forests around the world too. Living trees can store twice the CO2 as dead ones. A living tree produces 118 kilograms of oxygen every year and stores the carbon dioxide it sucks in to do that. Once the tree dies, it does release the stored carbon and create CO2 as it rots, and that goes back into the ecosystem. Then the living trees and bacteria nearby act on the dead matter and soak up some of that CO2 as they live. All in all, the Amazon soaks up 2 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide and only releases about 1.7 billion metric tons. That is a net gain, a big win. If we plant lots of trees, we can reduce carbon dioxide in our atmosphere and with it reduce global warming, climate change, and maybe other climate-related catastrophes as well over time. Humans have been shaping these forests for thousands of years, domesticating the plants and animals that live there, and harvesting the resources available in these vibrant ecosystems, but now we're just destroying them and replacing them with things that don't sequester carbon, but produce it like drilling, mining, cattle grazing, and so on. So to bring it back to the beginning here, humans are burning the Amazon to use the land for something other than forest. And it's worse because of that. According to widely published and repeated statistics that I couldn't find a source for, using an acre of rainforest for timber will earn about $60. That same acre for cattle can earn $400. But if you use the forest wisely and sustainably, the acre can produce $2,400 a year of renewable medicinal plants or fruits, and it still gets to be a carbon sink. The burning of the Amazon is bigger than the fear-mongering of oxygen depletion. Spaceship Earth has plenty of oxygen. 21% of our whole atmosphere is oxygen. But just like on actual spaceships, it is not oxygen but CO2 that will kill you. And we need forests to suck in that carbon, sink it, and trap it. We all need them, not just the South Americans. There is a lot of shaming of South American, Asian, and African peoples for deforesting their own countries, but the United States and Europe did it too, and did it first. We in the US destroyed a third of our forest habitat, separating massive forested areas into tiny pockets and causing extinctions of an unknowable number of species. There's very little virgin forest in the United States. In 2014, the United Nations announced 
announced the New York Declaration on Forests, calling to have deforestation by 2020 and put an end to it by 2030, along with a pledge to reforest up to 350 million hectares, which is an area larger than the country of India. The US signed this pledge, Brazil, did not. The idea that we are affecting the planet in this way is yet another argument to show we have definitely entered the Anthropocene, the period during which human activity has been the dominant influence on climate and the environment. We already control most of the environment, and in another few hundred years, we could probably clear cut every continent, irrigate every desert, and seed every cloud to rain. But when we affect one pillar of our environment without regard to consequences, like we are doing now on our little spaceship, we're cutting the legs out from under our planet's future. So yeah, the Amazon is burning and it is bad. We're burning up oxygen, we're not replacing it. But we're also, and more importantly, filling our atmosphere with a gas that traps heat, disrupts weather systems, and causes ocean acidification, which could kill phytoplankton and actually reduce our oxygen replacement even further. And we're removing a massive carbon sink for the planet. And that is even more needed than oxygen. A 2015 study in Nature estimates that we've felled 46% of all the trees on our planet. We are the Thanos of Earth's trees. If we want to make changes, we need to make international agreements that involve money to protect carbon sinks and ways to sequester the carbon that's already out there. What incentive does Brazil have to keep the land forested? Grazing will make them more money. But I propose we do this because we acknowledge the power of forests, not because of the fear-mongering about the lungs of our planet. That propaganda actually belongs to the oceanographers. Our planet is a spaceship, alone in the cold vacuum of the universe with a set amount of every resource and no take backsies once something is gone. The only thing that comes in is solar energy, heat, and sunlight. When you think about it that way, we're gonna be pretty barren if we don't you know, use this unlimited source of energy that's coming in, right? That's what plants do. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I really hope that you learned something. If you have something else that's a myth that you want me to debunk and do the research on, let me know down in the comments. I've done a few of these already. Y'all really seem to like them. I actually really enjoy doing them. So let me know if you have any ideas. I'm Trace, please subscribe, and I will see you in the future.